Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenthanity.net here and welcome back to the C Sharp Fundamentals course for Unity. And in this one we're going to be covering selection control statements or otherwise called selection statements. Um, and so this is really kind of the core use everyday part of programming where uh, it's kind of the logic of how your program runs. So it'll determine based on some input or based on some dynamic code um, what to do next. Uh, so, you know, it'll, it can take uh, completely different paths based on what you tell your program uh, to evaluate, basically. So, why don't we go ahead and um, remove some of this old code here. Uh, and if you're actually completely new, uh, this is Visual Studio, um, and you can check out the first episode uh, by clicking in the top right. It shows you how to install it. Um, and if you're not using Visual Studio, you can follow along in any IDE. Uh, but you just want to be able to run this and see output. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and remove the rest of this. And what we're going to do is basically, I'll first write in comments uh, what all these control structures are. So we have an if, we have an if, else if, and we have an if, else. Um, and all these are kind of the same, but they can be uh, combined um, or they can also be exclusive. So the final one is a switch statement and these are the basic uh, control structures but of the selection type. So we can do different things based on what values are evaluated to be. So let's go ahead and first begin with an if statement here. And we can write if true, uh, sorry not print, oh I apologize for that. Uh, we can write console dot right line um, this statement will print okay perfect uh, and we have this start button up here or I'm gonna hit F5 to launch this uh, and we see this statement will print and by the way please note that we have console dot read key here because if that was not there this window would immediately close but um, I'm able to press a key to close the window Okay, so, so we just see our statement print because true is obviously true, right? Because with an if statement, uh, we just need whatever is inside of this parent, uh, well, this, these parentheses uh, to evaluate to true. Um, and obviously true evaluates as a true value, and that's why we get this statement to print. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is obviously check if false, and I'll just show you really quick um, how this will not print. So we'll write this statement will not print because obviously it won't. I'll hit F5 and it won't because this is not evaluated to true. And you can even see in Visual Studio, this is going to tell you unreachable code detected if you hover over it because you can never turn false into true. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch it to something uh, more interesting. So actually, why don't we go ahead and test our else if um, and I'll change this to false. Uh, and I'll tell you why in just a second, so I'll go ahead and delete this. So we'll put else if true. Uh, oops. And um, we'll just see how this actually will not run. Uh, or sorry, this, this will print and this will not print obviously because it's false now. So this statement will not print. And this statement will print in the else if. Um, and you can probably guess why. I mean, this kind of reads like English. So if false, we can think of it this way. If false is true, then print this. Um, but otherwise, so if false is not true, then if true is true, why don't we go ahead and print this statement here. Uh, and I'll hit F5 and show you, obviously, this statement is printed. And that's totally fine, right? So why don't we go ahead and see what happens if we put an else um, at the end of this. So I'll write console.write line. Um, will this statement print? And think of it this way whenever you run a selection statement, um, the first thing that is evaluated to true is the only thing that will run. So this else if is true which means that only this is the one that's going to run. This one obviously will not run because it's false, and this one will not run because 
this is already evaluated to true, so it's not so it's not false, so we don't need an else to run, right? So if I hit F5, we'll see only the else if statement is going to print. And we see that's the case. Okay, so but what if I just go ahead and change this to false? So now I mean this statement is kind of useless, but but these both will not run, right? Because they evaluate to false. So if both of those are not true, then our else statement should run, right? So let's go ahead and hit F5, and we see that's correct. So will the statement print uh, because these two are false and this one is true? Perfect. So the last thing I want to show you with these else ifs is if we put an else if in here, and this one evaluates to true, and this one is also true, then as we said, only the first one is the one that should print, right? Because in your control structure, uh, only the first thing that returns true is the one that runs, and then it just exits the loop. So think of it, it uh, this is true. So this runs, and then we ignore the rest and jump all the way down here right so so we find out this is true obviously like how it goes is basically from the top to bottom evaluate it's false okay it's true okay run it and then hop all the way down here right uh, it won't even pay attention to this one so let's hit F5 and see how that's true and the reason that's interesting is because these are both true right so you know maybe you'd intuitively think they'd both run but they will not, only the first one will run. So if, if you want, uh, you know, whatever you want to run needs to be within the true one. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind with these. Now why don't we go ahead and um, use something more interesting than just the booleans like we did before, uh, where we kind of switched it to numbers. So we'll say if, for example, five is greater than six, or yeah, six, then let's let's go ahead and console dot right line oops right line and in here why don't we go ahead and say um, okay um, math math uh, no longer makes sense right because five everybody knows five is not greater than six right so um, so then we'll put an else um, console dot right line We'll just say all is well in mathematics, right? Because hopefully five is not greater than six. So let's go ahead and hit F5. Uh, and then we see all is well in mathematics and that's perfect. So you just want to keep in mind, anything can go inside of this, uh, these two parentheses as long as they evaluate to a Boolean statement, which means either true or false. Um, and so I mean like, like even consider this, if 5 plus 1 is greater than 6, or let's say greater than or equal to 6, um, now, now with this will print, awesome, right? So 6 is greater than or equal to 6, so if we hit F5, we see awesome. And, and we see a whole bunch of arithmetic here, but in the end it returns a boolean, and that's why that works. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at a switch statement, which is really going to be the final part of this. And a switch statement is very similar to an if-else-if if statement. So let's go ahead and write a switch here. Uh, and in here, I'll write the value 5. And so with a switch statement, you put um, case instead of else-if. So let's put case um, 6, for example. And that means it's evaluating if 5 is the number 6, right? So here we'll write console dot right line 5 is 6 right um, and it's not so that won't happen and then we'll write case 5 you know 5 is 5 obviously um, and after all of these statements you should write a break um, as that will tell the switch statement to stop checking once it uh, hits the break here so let's go ahead and hit F5 uh, and we see 5 is 5 is the one that prints because obviously it's the case 5. So if I change this to a 7 um, and then we use a default statement here, so default console.writeLine 
what happens is that if none of these are uh, evaluated as correct, um, then what we have to do is uh, go ahead and say console.write line. Uh, we can just type in um, none of the uh, cases evaluated as true. Right, and thus we are here. So let's say a break at the end, um, and now we're good, right? So, so let's go ahead and hit uh, run here, and we see none of the cases evaluated as true. Uh, and that's because five is obviously not six or seven. Now the limitation of a switch statement is I can't check, um, I can't check like greater than six, see, because it'll say invalid expression term. And there's no way around that. Um, so with a switch statement, you don't typically want to do greater than checks because you know you can't. That's actually everything I want to cover with selection statements. I hope it helps you out. And if this makes sense, make sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe uh, for the rest of these videos. I'm also going to direct you um, to the video in the top right if you're interested in starting Unity faster. Um, there's a free video, it's a sample video from our course, which is also 90% off, which you can click the link in, in the description. Uh, so definitely check that out, and I will see you in the next video.